we got the brake pedal installed as well as the gas pedal on the other side. The gas pedal, we still need to hook up the cable and the return spring and all that kind of stuff. We can do that later. For the brake pedal, I installed two single barrel master cylinders. One of them is going to operate the front brakes, the other one's going to operate the rear brakes, and we can adjust the bias between them by adjusting these and all that kind of stuff. Then we can adjust the pedal length and all that with this and whatever. So now halfway through filming this little intro for this video, my camera that I've been using for three years now decided to crap out. It started smoking, the screen went haywire, and it just like went to factory reset mode. That camera was on its last legs anyway, so I needed a new one anyway. So once that thing crapped out, I had to run to Best Buy buy a new camera and I decided to get an upgraded uh, camera to my old one. So hopefully this is better picture and better audio and all that kind of stuff. I'm still playing around with settings but apparently it should be a clearer picture, uh, higher resolution, all this kind of stuff. So hopefully, hopefully it's a much clearer image and all this kind of stuff. But again, I'm still playing around with settings, so I haven't really fine-tuned it yet. So, now I think the next thing we should work on, on this, is let's install the gear shifter. So I started working on trying to figure out how to connect this up to the gear shifter that we just installed and I noticed something when putting on this little arm that I bought for this. Ah, that's uh, that's not supposed to do that. Yeah, this is basically broken. I'm not sure what exactly is broken in here, but it doesn't work and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't shift gears. If I pull it back all the way, I can, it, I can kind of feel like it's, you know, it like it's sh like it should do something, but it just, no matter how hard I wrench, it doesn't, it doesn't change gears. It just, it just stays in neutral. So unfortunately, this is broken, and I have to, uh, have to fix this. Now I've been looking at the manual for this engine for like the past 20 minutes, and it looks like we can possibly fix this and get at this part on the other side by simply taking the clutch cover off and removing the clutch baskets. But unfortunately, to take the clutch cover off, we have to take the engine out of the frame. It's just uh, it's not the best setup, but it's just how compact this thing has to be. It's just the way it is. So now we already have to take this engine out to completely weld the entire frame together. So I'm gonna wait to fix this until we have to take, take the engine out for that. And then I, I'll wait till to uh, hook up the gear shifter until we fix this problem. Alright, so I think the next thing we should work on is we need to completely weld the whole frame together, which means we have to tear this whole thing apart, uh, strip this whole thing down so therefore we can, you know, finish all the welding on this frame, which is, because right now everything is still just tacked together with like one or two tacks everywhere and it's holding up, but we, we do need to weld this thing together so therefore we can start working on uh, finalizing everything else, trying to get this engine running and get the gear shifter fixed. Uh, I'll try to fix that once I get the engine out of the frame. And uh, once we do that, uh, once we weld this whole frame together, hopefully we'll have enough time in this video because we also need to lengthen the CV axles on the front as well as on the rear and we also need to lengthen the drive shafts. So let's start, let's start tearing this whole thing apart to weld the frame together.
Don't do that while I'm in there. So yesterday I finished welding the frame together. I always forget how long it takes to completely weld something like this together. I think it took me like uh, uh, two days to uh, completely weld this. We still need to do the axles, uh, but we'll do that later. Now check it out. We're actually getting some winter weather this winter. It's been 70 degrees and sunny for the last three or four weeks, which actually I've been enjoying because I, I hate the cold. This shed in here is not insulated. I do have a couple heaters that I have running in here when it's cold, but it's, unless you're standing in front of them, like huddled over them, you don't feel the heat, unfortunately. So, but it is nice to every once in a while get a little bit of winter weather. This is pretty much the most we get in the winters. And then probably by midday today, it's probably all gonna be gone, probably all gonna be melted. And then whatever. So that's pretty much the only winter we get in North Carolina so and to date today uh, today is January 3rd so because I know I'm probably gonna upload this video in a week or two so today is January 3rd now we still need to weld the axles together but before we start doing that let's actually start working on the engine so I've been looking at the manual for this engine and it looks like we can maybe maybe access the gear selector from just simply taking the clutch cover out. I don't know if I already said this on camera. I've been filming for Instagram and for this camera, so I'm not really sure. Uh, and that was a couple days ago. Anyway, so um, let's hope, let's hope that we can uh, fix this issue by simply taking the clutch cover off. Take, we, we're probably going to have to take the clutch basket out. We can look at the clutch, uh, clutch pads on here, see if they need replacing, and I'm probably also going to need uh, a new gasket set for this engine to reassemble it, so I may as well just order that now. But let's tear into this thing and see if we can fix the issue. Super good news, it looks like this is a simple fix. I wasn't able to see this when this was in the frame, but I'm looking at the uh, the shift fork, whatever you want to call this thing, that sticks out of the engine, and there's a groove for a snap ring on this side, and the snap ring is missing. Again, I wasn't able to see that when this thing was on the frame. That's why this thing slides back and forth, so that's, a, that's awesome. It's a super easy fix. I just shoved this back on here, and I'm able to slowly turn the engine over, and it goes through all the gears, goes to the neutral, that's second, should be third, and that should be fourth. So that's awesome, that's a super easy fix. All we gotta do is just replace the snap ring on this side, and that should work perfect. Now, as far as um, the clutch pads, or clutch discs, whatever these are called, it does look like they need replacing because they are very thin. Looks like there's almost no material left. So I will order new clutch pads or discs, whatever they're called, on eBay, and as well as a new clutch pad or it, as well as a new clutch cover gasket. So, but while we're waiting for that stuff to get here, I'll just put the cover back on, and um, we can put the snap ring back on this side. That should fix that issue, and then the. Let's move on with something else. And I think there's a washer that has to go here because there's like nothing for the snap ring to hit up against except for the gasket so let me see if I can find like a washer that'll fit uh, uh. hang on let me find some washers 
So I actually had to put this in the lathe to bore out the center because I couldn't find a washer that had the proper size to fit over this and that was wide enough. So I had to bore this thing out on the, on the lathe. Yeah, these things are a little on the heavy side, so let's finish all the welding. All we have left is the front and rear axles, so let's tear these things apart, finish the welding on them. You know, surprisingly, once you take the heavy stuff off, this thing weighs not that bad. Ah, man, that's just wonderful for my back. Just finished welding the axles together. Now, I was going to start working on reassembling this thing, but I also want to finish in this video, I want to finish the drive setup. The CV axles as well as the, the uh, drive shafts, I want to lengthen them and weld those together as well. So I think it's going to be a little easier to do that with these on the table versus on the floor. Now, for the front, it's going to be a little bit easier because the front just uses... Uh, the same CV axle because the differential and the hubs on the front are the sick from the same vehicle. So all I had to do was I already cut them in half. We just have to figure out how the spacing between them and weld something in between. But for the rear, the rear uses different hubs from a different vehicle. The the uh, the rear differentials are from a Polaris Magnum 325, and then the rear hubs are from a Polaris. Uh, a Polaris something 450. So for the rear, they use this style of CV axles. I have two of these for the rear and then two of these for the rear. We're going to be cutting all of them in half. We're going to be using this portion, this half, for the hubs. And then for the differentials, we're going to be cutting these apart and using this half for the differentials. And we have to weld them together with a space in between them because these are a lot longer than these really short CV axles. So let's cut these things apart and then uh, start putting this thing together and figuring out the spacing between them and weld something in between.
All right, so I'm using inch and a quarter hot rolled round stock. I don't really have anything else that's uh, that's a smaller diameter that would work. Ideally, I, I should be using cold rolled, but I don't have any, any of that. I do have a ton of machine steel, which machines beautifully, but it doesn't weld that great. Welds like crap, and the welds on there are kind of brittle, and they don't really, you know, it's not, machine steel isn't really meant for welding. So this hot rolled steel is gonna have to work. It's the strongest stuff that I have in stock right now. So we're gonna have to machine two different dimensions on either side, because one side of the CVs is .944, the other side of the CV, is 1.7 because one side is meant for a bigger vehicle so it has a thicker shaft diameter than the other side and I'll just split the difference somewhere in the middle. got these things tacked into place. Now I'm starting to realize just how much material I'm gonna have to weld to get these to a 100% weld. That right there is a lot of filler metal. Now I was considering at first to TIG weld the majority of this and then MIG weld the rest of it, but I don't really think MIG welding is gonna be strong enough so I may just try to TIG weld this whole thing. I, I was also considering putting a sleeve over this once I'm done welding this, but if I TIG weld the whole thing, I don't think it'll need any sleeves. And that's just one of four that I need to weld. So this is gonna take me a long time to weld this. And once I'm done with this, then we get to do it to the front axle. This is just the rear axle. So honestly, I'm not really sure if we're gonna get all this done in this video. I may just have to do this and then reassemble this project and save the rest for the next video because just doing this is gonna take me a very long time. Now after tack welding these in place, I was going to pull these axles out of the axle frame to finish welding, but I'm actually gonna leave these in here because I really want to make sure that once I'm finished welding that these things run true and it's going to be a lot easier to do that with these in the frame. It's a little bit harder to get in here to weld these things, but it's going to be a lot easier to make sure that these are running true. So I'm, right now they're a little bit off. This one's a little bit off, so I'm going to go grab my dial indicator and my hammer to try and get that a lot better and then continue welding these things.
All right, yesterday I finished welding all four of these to almost a level spot. And now the next thing I need to do is I want to do a finishing pass on these to get the this weld a little bit proud of uh, the thickness of this and to also try to get rid of the some of the ugliness of these welds. is all welded together that took way longer than I thought it was going to take now these welds definitely aren't winning any beauty awards they're definitely not the prettiest welds I've ever done but I think I hope at least that they are strong enough to support to do to hold up to what we're doing I don't think the I don't think the axles what we just welded I don't think that's the weak point I think the weak point with this setup is these differentials. These differentials are for a Polaris Magnum 325, a 325cc ATV that produces a whopping 30 horsepower and we're trying to push 75 horsepower through this thing with a heavier vehicle and bigger tires. I don't really think that these are gonna hold up and I'm doing an awful lot of work get setting this up when I honestly don't really think that they're going to survive the first test drive, so, but we'll soon find out. We'll find out if these work. That's why I'm really hesitant to put on bigger tires. I'd love to put some big tires on this thing. I just know, I would have, I just have a feeling that this de differential is going to have some, we're going to have some issues with it, with the tires we have on there previously. But you know what? I, just, I already have plans on how to upgrade all this stuff in the future, worst case, if these things do end up blowing up. Now, like I said earlier, uh, I'm running out of time with this video. I need to end this video here, so therefore I can start working on the next video for next week. Uh, I was wanting to do the front axle, but definitely don't have time for that. Um, next video in this project, we will do the front axle. We'll also do the, uh, the drive shafts, the front and rear drive shafts. We need to somehow lengthen those as well as re I was considering ending this video by reassembling this thing but that doesn't really make sense because in the next video of this project I have to disassemble the front end to weld the front axle so it doesn't make sense to assemble it in the in the ending of this video and then have to uh, disassemble it in the next video to weld the axle together so what I'm at, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shove everything to the side and pull out the mini crotch rocket build I want to do the next video of that project I know we took a, uh, like a three week break on that thing, so I wanna continue with that project. So for now, for now that's gonna have to be it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.